Recap in minutes. In today's video, we will be enjoying a comedy horror film, entitled Dead Snow 2, Red vs. Dead. There will be spoilers ahead, chill out and enjoy. The movie begins with a group of Nazi zombies getting furious at Martin and his friends when they steal their gold. The Nazi zombies kill Martin's friends while he is a bit on the arm and decides to cut it off with a chainsaw to avoid spreading the infection. He gives the Nazi zombies back their gold but learns he's missing a penny. Herzog, the zombie's commander, clings to Martin's car tenaciously as he drives away. Herzog's arm is cut by an incoming truck while he and Martin are still in the car. He loses his hand and tumbles into Marin's car during this incident. Martin tosses the missing penny on the ground while shouting at Herzog. The trucker witnesses the scenario. Aware that he needs to assess the situation, he gets down from the truck. The truck driver tries to save Herzog, but in return, Herzog stabs the man to death. He sees the missing penny on the ground. On the other hand, Martin is shown driving very fast. During this time, he feels drowsy. Martin begins to feel sleepy, and the car gets out of control and crashes. He becomes faint. Meanwhile, Herzog gathers his army together and gives them strict orders to head to the nearest town or city. After regaining consciousness, he finds himself in a medical facility. After that, some police officers arrive to question him. The cops don't believe Martin even though he answers their questions thoroughly. Unfortunately for Martin, he was probed as the killer of all the others and accused as the killer of some of his dead friends. The surgeon who treated him visits him to share some encouraging news. Fortunately, the police located Martin's missing hand in the vehicle, and he was able to have it reattached to his arm. When he hears this, he checks his hand and sees it is indeed Herzog's. When the doctor looks at his hand, he insists that it is not his. As soon as he says this, his hand slips out of his grasp. When the doctors tried to help, he turned violent and injured many of them. They try to control Martin by injecting him. Meanwhile, Herzog and his team have arrived in a rural community. They break into a house and murder the occupants. His undead Dr. Nazi performs surgery on him to sew his severed hand back to his forearm. Herzog notices that the hand is not his and is interchangeable with Martin's. Herzog possesses so many powers that he must bring his hand close to his arm, and it will immediately join his forearm. After that, they visit a cemetery where German soldiers are laid to rest. Herzog tries in vain to bring them back to life. The doctor then informs him that the graves and bodies here are quite ancient. In order to get the dead back to life, they need to offer fresh corpses. After hearing this, Herzog decides to kill a priest at a local church. While on his deathbed, Herzog touches the priest's face, bringing him back to life so he can serve in the army. This establishes Herzog as an influential figure. During this time, Martin is restrained to his bed with chains. An off-duty police officer is also present and currently sleeping. A young man named Bobby appears out of nowhere, he is an American tourist. When he notices the officer is sound asleep. With this in mind, he decides to visit Martin in his bedroom. Here, he spots the hand of a zombie. He snaps a photo of Martin's hand and sends it along to the anti-zombie squad. American soldiers were assigned to hunt down and collect zombie remains. Martin asks the boy to release him. As soon as he sees a cop outside, he is helpless to get away. Because of this, Bobby is thrown out the window. Martin checks Bobby around and discovers that he has passed out. In an effort to wake the kid, he presses down on his chest, but with such force that his organs are crushed and his bones break. The officer watches from the window and begins to suspect that Martin is responsible for Bobby's death. Martin takes off, and the cop gives chase. However, his hand now does something else odd. Numerous vehicles were parked outside and spots a Mercedes car. He rips off the car's emblem and tosses it to the cop. The police officer suffers severe injuries when the logo strikes his head. Soon after, he breaks the car window and flees. Bobby's phone is still with Martin, and the zombie team contacts him through it. Martin explains that Bobby is killed by the zombies. In response, Daniel informs Martin that he and his team will be traveling from Norway to assist him with his two assistants, Monica and Blake. Not long after that, Daniel and his assistants show up and track down Martin. They make plans to visit Martin, but first, they stock up on weapons to fight against the zombies. Meanwhile, Martin visits the World War II Museum, where he sees a clerk officer inside. In addition, Martin probes him for information about Herzog. Martin uses his hand to get him to talk about Herzog when he initially refuses to tell. He begins by discussing Herzog's past. After learning about the history, he concludes that Hitler was the zombie mastermind and assigned Hitler to take over the mission. For this task, 
He was ordered to wipe out a town called Velvet Darkwood before his team could get there. Men from Oxford murdered them. Martin then assumes that they are going to carry out Hitler's command. He has a map proving that the museum was located within the specified village. While studying the map, he suddenly hears a group of people screaming. Herzog and the rest of the army are already out there when he decides to check. The Nazi zombies are killing civilians and recruiting them into their army. They seize a guy and rip off all his ribs. As soon as Herzog walks into the museum, Martin and the clerk abandon their belongings and make a run. To avoid being killed, they take refuge at the museum. Herzog checks the map and grabs it. When Martin goes out, he finds two or three zombies slowly walking around, he quickly kills them, one by one, with his bare hands. Fearful of what might happen next, Martin kills a man. Here, he learns that he, too, possesses numerous abilities, believing that he has the capacity to raise the dead, he touches the body again, and the guy comes back to life. At that moment, Daniel and his squad arrive and throw an axe at the zombie's head. He takes a picture of the dead zombie. Martin then shows the power of his hand and resurrects the man again. Seeing this, Daniel decides to create an army to fight the zombies. During this time, Herzog and his army of Nazi zombies launch another attack on the civilians. The police travel to the area where Martin is believed to have committed the murders. Herzog's forces, guided by Hitler's map, keep marching toward the village. The zombie squads are there to witness. Daniel sends the clerk, Monica, and Blake to guard over Herzog. They plan to use the time they spend on their mission. Herzog was advancing with his tanks while his forces killed the locals. Both Monica and Blake have a brainstorm. One of them must go and take a zombie to them, and the rest will follow, the other task is to bomb the rest of the zombies. However, they'll need a brave person to do so. Consequently, the clerk is given this responsibility. He pursues the zombies and attempts to get them away. Herzog, however, forbids his army from following him, but he manages to win them over in the end. Following their strategy, they bomb the zombies. Because of their efforts, their plan succeeds, and the three of them are overjoyed. Herzog takes his retribution at this point, driving his tank in their direction and opening fire. More often than not, he flips the weapon around, fires at them, and then continues on. Herzog is convinced that they are no longer alive. Contrarily, Daniel's car becomes stuck in the dirt. The car needed to be towed away, so they propped up the tire with a piece of wood. However, it is still not moving. They thought of putting the zombie under the car. Having placed the zombie under the vehicle, they continue on their way. Then they arrived at the cemetery where the Russian dead were buried. As soon as Martin raises his hand in a display of power, each Russian rises from their grave. And Martin felt worried about what would happen if the Russian zombies ignored him. One of the Russian commanders stands up and walks up to Martin. When Martin saw him, fear and anxiety overtook him since he was clearly no ordinary guy but rather the devil himself, a tall, broad man. They looked to him as a leader, though, which pleased Martin. Now, Herzog's team is moving forward. The sun has risen, and now Martin is standing in his way. He was accompanied by a squad of Russian soldiers. Herzog's jaw drops as he sees the number of Russian soldiers accompanying Martin. Both armies advance toward one another out of a desire for revenge. That general attacks Herzog. Meanwhile, he faces a horde of zombies. In the end, he murders everyone. The officer arrives just in time to see everyone fighting. Simultaneously, he notices a massive tank approaching their car from the front. The moment he spots them, the tank plows into their vehicle, crushing it to pieces. Everybody takes refuge in a warehouse. Martin gives Daniel orders to operate the tanks. After that, tensions between the two soldiers developed to open warfare. Glenn and Monica Blake showed up simultaneously. In order to prove their superiority, Martin's team kills the enemy. Once again, a Russian soldier is about to kill Herzog when his zombie comes up from behind. Herzog and his men seize him, and then they all take turns killing him. The battle tide had shifted, and the Russians appeared to be on the verge of defeat. At that point, the survivors decided that we should kill Herzog because he was the reason the zombies were still alive. Martin realizes this and sets out to kill Herzog. Martin takes a lot of injuries in this fight with Herzog, but he is by no means helpless. He also possessed a hand similar to that of him. When Daniel finally arrived at the tank, he realized he had no choice but to climb inside and end the lives of two people. At the same time, they both look up as the tank enters the house. There are now only three Russians still alive. After Monica, the clerk, and Blake were involved in a fatal car accident, the clerk was the third person to meet his end. 
They were the last two people left, and now only Monica and Blake remained. She was in a terrible position in the midst of all those zombies. With the tank under his command, Daniel dispatches another zombie. Martin falls on the vehicle during his struggle with Herzog. Right now, Herzog is about to kill Martin. Then, without wasting any time, Daniel climbs into a tank, points the tank's gun towards Herzog, and fires. Herzog's head explodes, and he is killed. The movie ends with Herzog's death and his army's downfall. After killing all the zombies, the hunters and Martin both drive off. Afterward, he makes his way to the cemetery and visits Hannah's grave. Martin 33 digs Hannah's grave open and retrieves her from inside. As soon as he figures out how to bring her back to life, she awakens, and they are soon back together in the same apartment. Later, the Nazi doctor discovers Herzog's head, which is still conscious. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this and help the channel grow.